Hi, this is Karma Houdini here, and today I'm going to talk about the new game from Vanillaware, which is called 13 Sentinels Ages Rim. I'm a handful of hours into the game and wanted to give my impressions. Should you play it? Stick around to find out. Vanillaware, by the way, is the game studio known for games such as Odin Sphere and Muramasa the Demon Blade. First off, I'd like to say this game has great music and voice acting. And by the way, there's Japanese and English voice acting to satisfy both crowds. There's great art and animation. It must have been painstakingly created. You know, the effort really paid off. This game is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, that's to be expected from Vanillaware. Their games usually look amazing, but I feel like this is a... This might even be a step above their usual output. This game is essentially an adventure game, in the sense of a choose-your-own-adventure, mixed with real-time strategy RPG. The story chapters are purely adventure game. You just walk around, you talk, you make decisions, you think about topics, and then you can present those topics to other characters to progress the plot or get information, that kind of thing. And then the combat is real-time strategy. It sort of reminds me of a real-time version of the Front Mission series of strategy RPGs, if you're familiar with that. The different characters have sentinels, which are the giant robots in the game, with different capabilities during battle. You'll need to make use of everyone's talents to defend the terminals, which are like your home base in the battle mode. So it's basically always a base defense type of uh, gameplay. You can level up the character's sentinels to unlock more abilities and attacks for them. I wasn't sure if I would like the combat before playing this game, since I, I don't really play real-time strategy games or anything. But the gameplay in this is pretty fun. Although, in my opinion, it is the slightly weaker aspect of the game when compared to the story parts. However, I feel like it's necessary in order to break up, you know, just playing through, you know, the, the story all the time. It's a good way of creating balance of variety in the game. I do wish that the battle presentation was a little bit better. I feel like they had to cut corners with the battle presentation. Um, however, the attack previews are beautiful hand-drawn animations, so at least you have that. So when you hover over an attack, you get to see classic Vanillaware art depicting the mechs doing their attacks and stuff, but on the actual battlefield it has a very simplified battle presentation. I don't really fault them for cutting some corners as they are a small team, and the amount of detail they've put into this game overall is beyond incredible. Nevertheless, the, the, you know, the combat is, like I said, a decently enjoyable way to break up the story progression, and you as the player get to decide when to engage in battle and when to play through the story chapters, so you can decide how often you want to be fighting, how often you want to just be going through the story. Moving on to the characters, the characters in this game are the centerpiece. You know, you have 13 characters, 13 sentinels. Um, the characters all feel unique and they feel like real people rather than one-dimensional tropes. Uh, your attachment to the characters and your curiosity about how their stories will play out is really what drives you to continue the story just as much as the plot itself does. And speaking of that plot, the story is interesting. There are multiple plot threads that intertwine. There are different time periods going on, so there's kind of a time travel element. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the story unravels as it goes on. And, like, the story is pretty wild, but in a good way so far. It's nice to see them tackle a sci-fi narrative this time around, instead of the past Western fantasy and Japanese mythology-inspired games Vanillaware has done in the past. In the story, there are several branches based on the decisions you make and the things you interact with, but you can replay any chapter at any time to see the other paths if you wish. And the story is broken up in you know by character, so you can choose which character's story you want to play at what time. However, there will be locks at certain points that say you need to complete this battle mission or you need to progress another character's story before you can come back to this character and keep going, because they don't want you to spoil things and get too far ahead of yourself. The battle scenarios and the story chapters are always short enough that you never feel tired of playing during either style of gameplay. They break up the game in a nice way that provides momentum, or allows you to take a break after short bursts of play if you like. I'd recommend this game to anyone who is a fan of narrative-driven games, visual novels, or old-school point-and-click adventure games. Of course, if you're into real-time strategy, this might satisfy you, but since I'm not a real-time strategy buff, maybe it, it's not deep enough for people who are super into that, but I feel like it's a fun enough experience that it, you'll enjoy it anyway. Above all, this game is gorgeous, it's well voice acted, has great music, and the story is very interesting. And the gameplay, while not amazing, is, you know, it's pretty good and it's not going to hamper your enjoyment of the game. So I would definitely recommend picking up this game if this sounded interesting at all to you. 
Yeah, this studio, they, they put a lot of time and effort and money and resources into this game. And they it takes them a long time to make their games, and they never really sell blockbusters or anything. But uh, if you could uh, buy the game, I'm sure that would be great for them. So thanks for watching, and uh, stick around for more content. Like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks.